All right, I've been eagerly awaiting this meeting. This is this is my most fun meeting of all the TriMet board meetings. Now you hear people talking about how Metro should take over TriMet and make it accountable to the voters, make it more accountable. Right now it has no accountability to the citizens of the area and they act that way too. So you hear a lot of people t talking about, well, let's, let's take this, put this under Metro and let Metro be the TriMet board. Well, they don't do that and they don't do that for a reason, of course. Because they set it up specifically to be not accountable. That's that's what the psychopathic elites wanted. That's why they set it up this way. You understand? They, these people are not dumb. They set it up the way they want it. That's to make sure the cash flow goes uninterrupted into the appropriate pockets. That's how this country works. Not just TriMet, the whole country. Anyway, Metro does have this one thing that they do every year to pretend they're like supervising them. It's called the Tax Supervising Commission. It's the uh, Tax Supervising County Commission or whatever. Yeah, Tax Supervising and Conservation Commission. And they're, they're going to question TriMet in, about their budget. And it's usually pretty good entertainment if you're like a geek like me and, and are interested in watching the geekness. But, you know, it never goes anywhere. It's all, it's just another one of these shows that they put on for the public. You know, it's just a never-ending theater that they subject us to to kind of try to persuade us that they care about us when anybody with a brain knows by now these people don't give a damn about us. These are all elites. They're all, they're all sucking the tit of the taxpayer. They're all, they're all on the dole, basically. None of them are accountable. Even the politicians, you know, they're not accountable any more than anybody else. Um, you don't have really a choice of who you vote for. The people that run for office are pre-selected, et cetera, et cetera. So let's watch this. Andrew's going to uh, give us a little safety briefing. We'll watch as much as I can of this. I don't know if I'll get through the whole thing right now. Good morning, everybody. Um, Andrew Wilson, the Executive Director of Safety and Security here at TriMet. Quick safety brief just for us today. Um, we're going to, if if ever there's a, a time where we need to call a pause to the hearing look, for look whatever. Ozzie, look at Ozzy. <laughs> he's, he's grooming himself over there. Do I look good? Yeah, Ozzy's really into looking good. Reason. Um, yes, you look we'll look good, to the Ozzie. board chair to make that declaration. And at that point in time, I just tell everybody we'll direct you to Pat There's Williams, Bonnie our Todd. security there, who will take her? you to a right designated here. room around the Bonnie corner. She'll so be Ricky. exiting that door. Um, I don't anticipate that. Hopefully that won't happen, but what, um, what? it's just good for us all to be aware of the plan. What, 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 what's that evacuation? Is she giving the evacuation instructions? <laughs> in case director or uh, chair simmons needs to make that decision so what and with that i, I will that. give it back to nancy what was, i guess I, was, I, I, I wasn't paying attention thank you good morning everyone my name is harmony kiros i'm the chair of the tax supervising and conservation harmony commission Kitos. welcome everyone to this annual does she look like a portland uh what do you call it we call the look of Portland. I guess the look of Portland is her. Well, hearing the TSCC is a legislate is a community oversight commission established by the Oregon Legislature. The commission oversees the budgets of all TSCC member taxing districts, and annually conducts a thorough budget review and certification process. So, a so I guess I'm wrong. I'm guess this is not part of Metro. This is some some other committee made up by the so-called leaders to rubber stamp all the budgets i guess because they don't they don't change anything but they want to give the appearance that they're like oh we're keeping an eye on this stuff additionally the tscc holds public budget hearings to engage with district leadership and provide additional opportunity for public comment before public before budget adoption I'll now ask my fellow commissioners to and the staff to introduce themselves and state if they have any conflict of interest or business relationships with the district. I'll start. Go ahead, Matt. Good morning. My name is Matt Donahue, uh, second year as a TSCC commissioner, and um, I do not have any conflicts uh, with TriMet, and uh, I ride the 17 and the 72. 
Good morning. I'm Margaret. I remember her. She was here last year. She was pretty good. I remember her face. Norton, I have, this is the beginning of my eighth and final year oh, yeah. on the commission. I think every year we start the, the, the hearing season with TriMet, so it's nice to be back with friends again. I am retired. I worked for government um, throughout my profession. She, she's one of the insiders. They always, all these people are insiders. There's no outsiders allowed on any of these committees. Career last as the CFO at Metro, oh. uh, and I have no conflicts of interest with the district. CFO Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is James Offsink. He, he him. He was last, last year. I remember him. I am the vice chair of the Tax Supervising and Conservation Commission. This is my eighth and final year, like Margot. Um, when I'm not uh, here with TSCC, I work at OHSU as an IT project manager, and I don't have any conflicts uh, with the district. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you again. My name is Mark Wobold. This is my sixth year with the TSCC. As you uh, have heard us say, we're going to lose some important uh, folks here soon. We'll be recruiting. So, <laughs> um, My professional career has ended uh, in June. I'm now retired, like Margot. And uh, I was a senior policy analyst with the president's office at Portland State University. Uh, and I have no conflicts of interest with the TriMet. And I ride 17 as well. Good morning. I'm Allegra Wilhite, Executive Director with TSCC, and I ride the 15. Tuni Betchard, Budget Analyst with TSCC. Good morning. This is uh, my fourth year with TSCC. Uh, my second year as chair. Um, I work in K-12 science education, curriculum and assessment development. Um, I ride the new division line, um, most recently on a field trip with a bunch of third graders, um, <laughs> which works well for those too. Um, with the district representatives, please introduce themselves. Yeah, okay, let's hear them. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Kathy Way, and I represent Clackamas County. No, you represent the elite. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Ozzy Gonzalez, welcome to uh, District I 2. I represent District 2. My hair is very nice. <laughs> Look at him, he's so cute. Ozzy, you're so cute. <laughs> Uh, good morning. I'm Linda Simmons. I'm the board president, and I represent District 3, and this is my second year as uh, board president, and I'm retiring from the board soon, and so um, good, next good. year you'll have someone new. Good. Bye-bye. Good morning. I'm Lori Bauman, uh, District 4, Southeast Portland, and I'm in my eighth year on the TriMet board, and this is my second to the last meeting. Good. Good riddance to you. I'm Laverne Lewis, and I represent District 6, and I love Max, and I ride Max. <laughs> you do, huh? Hey, good morning. I'm General Manager Sam DeSue. I've been at the organization for four years. This is my coming up on my second year as a general manager. Good morning. I'm Shelley Devine. I'm General We'll, we'll go from there. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the, the district's receipt of the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for its fiscal year 2022-23 adopted budget book. Congratulations to the district. Uh, we'll start with some brief introductory remarks from the district, after, after which we'll hear public comment. Uh, then There's we'll ask questions comment. and discuss the budget with you. Good morning, um, and thank you. Thank you, board, for being here. Thank you, commissioners, for being here, just as well as the public. Uh, uh, board chair. Poor, poor. Sammy, baby. Curious and commissioners, TriMet's approved fiscal. He's, he's got his name tag. I like his name tag. I like your name tag, Sam. I like that. I like that you try to show yourself as just a regular guy. Fiscal year 2024 budget of $1.92 billion includes $817.3 million. Did you hear that? $1.92 billion. $1.92 billion. 
Includes eight hundred and seventeen point three million dollars in day to day operating and day to day operating revenue, which leaves one point one billion. What about that other one point one billion, Sammy baby? Requirements and three hundred and twenty two point three million dollars in capital improvement. The proposed budget supports the agency business plan. This is the guide that we use to align financial decisions with our agency vision, mission, and values. As President Simmons will mention this morning, um, our priorities for the coming year includes transit services, capital investment, electrification, equity, and access. Now I want to take a closer look at what the budget aims to achieve in each of these categories. On a transit service, in addition to maintaining current levels of service, which are 20% cut from the pre-COVID scamdemic, TRIMET plans to begin restoring service hours that were cut in 2020. So all of you transit riders, I love that. We will begin restoring. We will begin restoring someday, maybe. Jeff, let's see, let's see if he tells you when this is going to happen. Service hours that were cut in 2020 due to ridership declines from the COVID-19 pandemic and in 2022 due to the historic operator shortage. The FY24 no, budget... Due to the fact that you made one of the best jobs in the country, one of the worst jobs in the country, by getting rid of defined pensions and excellent health care benefits and just turning it into basically another job. The only, the only thing which it has is better pay after three years. So, you know, let's, you know, they, they try to pretend that they had no role in destroying the, uh, the bus operator ranks. They had a huge role in it. It begins to roll out plans from our Ford Together concept, which was formed by community engagement, community engagement. and development. It was not formed by community engagement. You announced it. I just can't take this shit. You need to listen to them lying to us. To better serve riders. To better serve riders. Also, um, to serve riders, especially with limited incomes. Yeah. The first package of service change is scheduled to begin September 2023. Under the topic of transit equity, inclusion, and community affairs. Yeah, as long as you meet our, our dress code. You know, it depends on which operator you get. I mean, ditches are now standard operating procedure over there. They just throw everybody in a ditch that they don't like. We don't like him. He's too loud. He's too rude. He's too dirty. He's pissed himself. Ditch, 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 ditch. Equity and inclusion, my ass. Since TriMet expanded our Honored Citizen Fair in 2018, nearly 50,000 Oregonians have signed up to ride for significantly less based on their incomes. Okay, good. good, the, good. We like that. That's all good. I agree with that. Good. Very good. Honored Citizen Reduce Fair, which is also open to seniors age 65 plus, people on Medicare, and people with disabilities, cuts the cost of riding monthly and annually by as much as 72%. In addition, to these programs, TriMet FY 2024 budget continues to support riders who are struggling financially through alternative access transit programs. These programs provide he's doing better than usual when he's reading it right off his computer screen. Millions in support for local nonprofits and organizations to get free and reduce fares to riders who yeah, need them. I don't them. like that. I just I just tweeted out my solution to this. You want you want to end all of the uh, negative comments about the fair increase? All you got to do is one thing. One here it is, one thing. Offer a free pass for those who have no income or very low incomes. Anything below a thousand a month should be able to get a free transit pass, not from some community partner bullshit, but right from you, the transit agency who's paying this guy, who knows what he's up to, it's up to over 400000 by now, I'm sure. You know, here they are raising the fares on the poorest people while these people are all making fortunes. Um, on capital investments, in the coming year, TriMet plans to complete most of the remaining construction 
for our Better Red Mike. The Better Red, which was 100% boondoggle, which, by the way, also equals the fiscal cliff. Nobody needed the Better Red. It's all, especially when the ridership collapsed. All of these capital projects should have stopped, but they didn't. They just marched forward with them all, showing you how corrupt they actually are. Extension and reliability project. Once finished, the project... Nothing ever improves reliability. They do all these projects, and they're always fucking unreliable. I like Legal Man. Legal Man on Twitter. Project will improve reliability on the entire MAG system by adding new sections of tracks uh, near Gateway Transit Center and the Portland Airport and extend in red line to the Fairplex, to the Fair Complex Station in Hillsboro. For the climate, this will be a big year for TriMet as we accept delivery of 24 new battery electric buses. This reflects our first bulk purchase of electric vehicles since adopting our plan to fully transition to a zero emissions bus fleet by 2040. At TriMet, we are committed to serving our region, supporting our customers right, and employees, and being good financial stewards of tax, taxpayer funds. Yeah, sure. For FY 2024, our budget is balanced and required by law. However, expenditures are are anticipated to be greater than resources, oh, yeah? and TriMet will draw on the excess fund. I was just looking through all of their budgets, and I didn't see any evidence of this. As a matter of fact, they have a half a billion dollars in reserves right now. They've never shown any actual evidence of where where is this fiscal cliff. Like, show us, in writing, revenues versus expenditures and how they are related to this so-called fiscal clip. They've never shown that. They've never made that clear. They just say it, and we're supposed to believe it. Balance as a result. This is one of three predetermined scenarios that TriMet has traditionally followed to maintain a balanced budget. With that, I'll turn it over to our Executive Director of Finance and Administrative uh, and our Chief Financial Officer, Nancy Young, to provide comments to the questions you have submitted. Thank you for your time this morning. All right. Oh, there's this look, Mussolini move. There it goes. He's doing the Mussolini. Uh, before we be All right. Not bad, Sammy. Uh, okay. That's enough for now. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not too bad, Sam. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good for you. All right. Over now. It's enough. I can't really take this so much of this stuff. I'll, I'll do more later, maybe.